America was at its peak between 1950 and 1960. Um, you could l go to sleep with your door open, your screen door shut. You didn't have to lock anything. I mean, that's how it was. There was just a common decency. Kids could still pray in school. They could read their Bible. Um, a, a, a Sunday, there was nothing. Do you remember these days? On Sunday, there was nothing open. There were the towns and communities all over America that on Sunday they closed their doors. You couldn't you couldn't buy gas. You didn't go to the you didn't go to the grocery store. You just couldn't do business with somebody unless it was an emergency on Sunday. Nobody did that. That why? Because that was out of respect for people going to church. It's not because they thought it was the Sabbath. It was out of respect for people going to church. They just said, we're just not going to do business on Sunday. Chick-fil-A still will not do business on Sunday. They represent the America that used to be. And we think of that so strange now. But that's how it is. Or that's how it was. And um, But America has turned completely around. We have lost just about every shred of decency and morality in this country. So that... Here are politicians who are standing up and they're trying to take at least a soft stand on sodomite marriage. And they say, we just think it's between a man and a woman. And so you get the Hollywood crowd saying, oh, these people need to drown in the hurricane. That's what they need. And um, to me, it's interesting. The hurricane's not going to Tampa. It's going to New Orleans where they're having southern decadence. Who controls the hurricane? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be dealing with this next week in the Watchmen broadcast. Um, and I am... I am 100% positive, and I may be wrong, I am 100% positive that there's going to be at least four or five YouTube bloggers out there and uh, some other WordPress bloggers. They're going to they're gonna rehash this thing with harp and, and weather control and all of these diabolical machines that apparently the government has to cause hurricanes to go into exact location. Uh, you've seen all that. You've probably watched the videos and went, oh, wow, I didn't know they could do that. Well, you still don't. You still don't know they could do that. Because, and they're going to say, well, what about HARP? Well, yeah, well, what about HARP? We still don't. I mean, I believe in it. I believe this gigantic antenna array. I think something weird is up with it. But the truth is, neither you nor I, Nick Begich, who does all the commentaries on he's like the HARP expert, None of these guys really actually know what's going on. But here's something that we have. We have a sure word of prophecy. And one of the things that I do know is that God controls wind. He is in control of all of the wind. And so God says, when they say, when they are raging against him, and they want to break the bands asunder and cast the cords of God from them, Here's what God says in verse 4 of Psalm 2. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. That's what Isaac's name means. God is laughing. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. You know, I want to look that word up. Can I do that? Can I just take like three seconds here to, I think I have it bookmarked. Here it is. D-E-R-I-S-I-O-N. Derision. It means mockery. That's what it means. Ridicule. To laugh. That's what it means. To deride somebody. Um, he that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. You know what? Uh, again, I, in fact, I'm going to just kind of take you off the path for a second. Look at verse 4 again. In case you didn't know what the word derision means, the Bible tells you in that verse, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, the Lord shall have them in derision. The word derision means to laugh at, to mock at them. And it says it right in that verse. The Bible is your best translator. The Bible is your best, um, it's your best dictionary. And I hope everybody understood what I was getting at when, when I recorded this last Watchman broadcast on the Bible translation issue. Um, I brought up the the idea of how everybody's everybody's preacher, everybody's scholar, 
these people that I was down at the conference in Branson, they're all telling everybody, you really got to go to the original Hebrew and Greek in order to understand the Bible. You really got to, the, the real Bible's in Hebrew and Greek. That's where it is. And this English Bible has got mistakes all in it, and it's wrong, and it's all faulty, and it doesn't say what I want it to say. So I'm going to say to go to the original Hebrew and Greek. And it dawned on me, they don't really do that. They don't do that. It, I, if you have a pastor, if you know of a pastor or were a former church member of a church whose pastor said, now, really, we need to go to the Hebrew and Greek on this. He doesn't do that. He, does, he makes it look like he does it. But he, can I tell you what he did? He does exactly, I want to do this. Can I, can you just, can you hold on one second? Well, like five, six seconds. I'm going to go get a book. I'm going to show you what they do. I'm going to go get it. I, it's in the next room over here where the top secret, other top secret studio is. So hang on one second and I'll be, I'll be right back. I'm going to get the book. There it is. I got it. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Here we go. I got the book. Now I got to I got to get my pillow all fluffed up and I got to put my earplug back in and all this other stuff. But I got to show you this. This is what they do. Okay? Um this is and I got it from uh, a girlfriend I had when I was in college. No, it wasn't Lisa. A girlfriend that I had when I was in college. She gave me this as a gift. She said, oh, you're taking Greek class. Well, you're going to need a Greek Bible then, a Greek New Testament. <laughs> and she didn't know that um, the Greek New Testament I was supposed to get did, was not supposed to have the interlinear in it. Let me pull that up to the screen here. Do you see that? Let me do that right there. If I can hold it real still, you'll see that it has Greek words and it has the literal word for word interp interpretation or translation underneath it. Okay? That kind of defeats the purpose of taking elementary Greek is if you have it have it translated for you right underneath it. <laughs> but she, and she didn't know. And did you know that I used this in class and got away with it? No wonder I got a B plus in that class. I'm going, oh yeah, I can I can translate this. Hang on one second, and that's what I would do. Um, yeah, I know it's cheating. Yeah, I know. But anyway, uh, here's here's the issue here. Whenever your pastor says, now uh, we really need to go to the original languages to really understand this. That's not what he's doing. He's not going to the original languages. You know what he's doing? He's going to, he's either got an interlinear like this, or he's going to a translation dictionary called a lexicon. Like a strong, like the lexicon at the end of the Strong's Concordance. It has a Hebrew and a Greek lexicon. And he's going to, the, that's, that's not the original Hebrew and Greek. You, do you get what I'm saying? He's not going, he does not know how to read and speak fluent Hebrew and Greek. He doesn't know how to do that. He took a class. He took a stupid year-long class on elementary Greek. He may have, he may have took an advanced class to get his master's degree. But the bottom line is, when he gets out of that class, he still does not know how to speak fluently Koine Greek. He doesn't know how to do that. And so what does he do? He gets his interlinear out, or he goes to his lexicon, which is interpreted for him. So wait a minute. He said you had to go to the original languages, but he didn't go to the original languages. He went to another interpretation of the languages. That's what he did, and he did so in violation of the Scripture. You're not supposed to do that. It, there's, it's already been interpreted for us, and nobody, accept, nobody buys that. Nobody accepts that. Anyway.
Back to Psalm chapter 5, or Psalm chapter 2, verse 5. Uh, the Bible says, Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Uh, right next to that, re right, uh, Revelation 12, he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And it just seemed funny to me that here they're having this gay you-know-what festival down in New Orleans again seven years later and God's going to do it again same place with the same thing and um, he, it's called Isaac and that's basically uh, God's laughing at their calamity and it just amazes me when I, when I, when I looked at that website uh, the idea that these people were so bent on going to New Orleans so they could all hook up together. I mean, you, I mean, you get it. You know what this is, don't you? Um, it, it's sickening. It's disgusting. But this is what these people are all about. They have no thought of anything else. And the wrath of God does not scare them. This is why they do what they do in public, by the way. They do this stuff in public. Um, where are my notes for today? Uh, I was going to read some news articles here. Uh, this is from the London Telegraph. Cannabis smoking permanently lowers IQ. Duh. Have you ever talked to somebody? Have you ever, have you, do you know somebody that loves to smoke marijuana? And they do it, and they have done a lot of it. Have you ever tried to talk to them? These people are dumber than a box of rocks. But the scientists in the lab coats had to be the one to tell us. Teenagers who regularly smoke cannabis are putting themselves at risk of permanently damaging their intelligence, according to a landmark study. Researchers found persistent users of the drug who started smoking it at school had lower IQ scores as adults. They were also significantly more likely to have attention and memory problems later in life than their peers who abstained. Are you, are you kidding me? You had to put lab coats on guys with clipboards and test tubes and surveys and all this stuff to figure this out. I've known people that have smoked a lot of marijuana in their life, and they are not as smart as everybody else, and they have a short attention span, and they have a short memory span. Hey, Jim. Huh? Oh, you talking to me? Yeah. Furthermore, those who started as teenagers and used it heavily.